Wait a second. Let's take a closer look at what's actually happening. In the hills surrounding the Perwin Valley, there is currently a group of conservationists that are working together. These people come from all walks of life, but they have one goal in mind, and that is to improve our ecosystem. They can do that by a treatment that is called woody plant reduction, and it targets some sagebrush, but primarily juniper and pinyon pine trees. This will help to increase understory diversity and cover, restore wildlife habitat, increase forage, improve ecosystem functions such as watershed, and reduce or manipulate fuels to increase ecosystem resilience to fire and resistance to invasive annual grasses such as foxtail and cheatgrass. Well, I'm standing right here in a drainage and I wanted to show you there's a line. On this side you have lop and scatter and on this side you have mastication. Mastication, lop and scatter. Lop is simply cutting down of the tree and scattering the branches. Lop and scatter. Now that is beneficial because it creates habitat for a lot of small animals, birds, etc. And it also slows down the progression of decomposition. So the decomposition will be strung out over a long period of time, both immediate because of mastication and long term because of lop and scatter. It's a really, a really neat thing. One, one extra point that I'd like to make out is if there's any historical places, anything of historical significance, it is left untouched. So if there's an area where perhaps Native Americans uh, had a spot where they were making tools, then that area is left alone. If there's even a spot as recent as the 1970s, or 50s where perhaps sheep herders had a camp and there are uh, remnants of their life at that time that's now of historical significance and it's left alone so for those that are concerned about that happy to report those areas are left alone here's what kind of soil you're looking at before this treatment let me show you so the soil is extremely gravelly and sandy. There's little to no organic matter in it. You can see that. Yeah, this falls apart. Funny. Anyway, so the organic matter that is placed by mastication is going to make an incredible difference on the soil. You can already see that it's doing that. Pinion. And juniper. One thing I'd like to talk to you guys as I leave this permit is the importance that a treatment like this has for our community, for our economic from an economic standpoint, but also from an environmental standpoint. Uh, a lot of people wrongfully believe that treatments such as this degrade our lands and take away habitat and take away a lot of food sources and damage water sources, damage uh, the soil and in fact, recently I was out here with some family and, and there was a couple of local people that were out here looking for uh, deer and they were really upset when they found out that we were not only for this treatment, but the ones that got the program rolling and, and are potentially, well, are the ones paying for it. You know potentially the reason why it's here why it's happening 
and and their justification for being upset about it is that it will make it easier for the poachers to be able to kill deer and I can see how cutting down trees might make it easier to see deer yeah you could spot a deer a thousand yards out there as opposed to 50 or 25 yards before the trees were cut but now now there's going to be an abundance of grass there's going to be an abundance of water you know pinion and juniper trees take up an incredible amount of water and they do nothing for the environment uh, they have something called an alleopathic system <laughs> i don't know what it's called auto alleopathic pheromone anyway they they create an ecosystem below their canopy that does not allow grasses or forbs to grow. Now that's concerning. Not only do they create an area where grasses and forbs don't grow, but they also tend to be problematic when it comes to snowfall. A lot of people don't think about that. But if you look out on a pinion juniper forest after it has snowed, all of the snow is on their branches and it evaporates before it can get to the ground. So we lose water before it even gets to the ground with pinion juniper stands. And to add that to the fact that they suck up a lot of water but are, are of little benefit to our ecosystem, just furthers my point that they are a weed. They're an invasive species and people don't understand that. So it's a beautiful thing that this land is getting back to what it should look like. It's a beautiful thing. It's going to look like the grasslands that our ancestors saw when they first came to Parowan. It's going to be an excellent place for those foraging wildlife, the ruminants. Not only, not only the wildlife that are ruminants, such as deer and antelope and potentially even elk out here, but it's also great for sheep and cattle. And that's where America gets their protein. And it, it's just an incredible cycle if we manage it the right way. And unfortunately, it hasn't been managed the right way for a while. Oh, one point I, I forgot to make is how much of a fuel load pinion junipers add to an area. They are extremely flammable. The oils on their fronds, on their, on their leaves and needles, I mean needles, is, is extremely flammable. And not only that, but they have a dry bed of flammable material below them where nothing else is growing. And so a fire in a, in a PJ forest can spread extremely fast and extremely hot. And the concern with an extremely hot forest fire is that it turns the ground into a hydrophobic state, which means that it won't allow water to penetrate. So after the fire has happened, and everything has burned, now you have an entire landscape where the water won't, won't absorb into the ground. And we have flooding and landslide problems. Uh, there was another thing. Oh, when the, when the fires burn extremely hot and, and do a lot of damage to the soil, next we have a real concern with all of the microbes being uh, killed in the soil. It's a little muddy right now. Oh, shoot. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, so when the microbes are killed in the soil, you don't have a healthy environment for anything to grow. Without microbes in the soil, nothing is going to grow healthy. Microbes in the soil are one of the most important things in our environment. They are what keep the world turning. 
So long story short, pinion junipers are an invasive species. We need to get rid of them. This is the kind of ground I'm talking about. Look what happens underneath them. Nothing is growing underneath them. It's a sad state when that's all we've got. So I want you guys to know and understand what's happening here locally, why it's happening, why it's important that it's happening, and how it's going to impact you. If you're not a farmer or rancher, you may think that it's not going to impact you, but it is. Especially if you're a hunter, especially if you're a conservationist, especially if you're concerned about the watersheds, which we all should be as consumers and people that live in our community. So I hope that this field trip was enjoyable for you. I know that it would have been better if we would have been able to come out here in the, in the school suburbans and have a rip roaring time. But I want you guys to know that uh, school is going to continue on and you're still going to learn just in a different way. And I hope you keep your spirits up about you and remember uh, that I'm here if you need anything. Ta-ta!